Hello, and welcome to Spirits Podcast, Episode 4, Eros. And Psyche. Don't forget Psyche. (laughs) Don't forget Psyche. This episode is jam-packed full of action, romance, hurt feelings, betrayal. There's, uh, you know, nagging mother-in-laws. There's invisibility. There's tragic acts of romantic devotion. There's it's talking towers. It's a bit of a telenovela. Oh, yeah. It's it's legit. It is probably the first uh, Greek soap opera. There you go. And we are back to the Greeks. Eros is someone that I didn't know was a person. I just thought that it was like a word that came up in literature studies of like the three classic kinds of love. One of them is agape. I don't remember the other one. Uh, <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, shit, Amanda. I don't either. Uh, I, my brain is saying stoicism. That's, That's not right. Not it. Let us know. <laughs> but we know that you're going to enjoy it. And what are we drinking today, Julia? We are drinking the most romantic of all wines, rosé. <laughs> or the most girly. Uh, depending on your tastes, mm. those can be the same. I don't really remember recording this podcast, so that may be a sign that we are two-ish glasses of rosé in. And uh, I hope that upon listening back to it, um, you will get the message. Enjoy this episode of Spirits. Amanda. Yes. What happens when love falls in love? Uh, a paradox? (laughs) Not quite. Um, we're today we're going to talk about, um, Eros and Psyche. Interesting. In Greek mythology. Psyche, like your mind, your psychology, your kind of like soul? Well, in Greek, it actually meant mind and soul. Interesting. Same kind of word. Sure. So like not your brain, but the part of you that is you. Yes. Cool. Um, And eros obviously means love. So for those of you who don't know, eros is the son of Aphrodite, who is the goddess of love. Cool. And is Aphrodite herself the daughter of Zeus? Is that, is that right? No. She's kind of like the sister of Zeus. Uh, she was actually born when Zeus cut off their father's dick and threw it in the ocean. What? <laughs> so um, basically... What, what then happened? Basically, the dick goes in the water. It foams up. And <gasps> out of the foam, Aphrodite is born. Literal sea foam. Like literal sea foam, like coming out. In a Botticelli uh, seashell covered in hair and foam. When my mom told me not to touch the sea foam on the beach, she was right. (laughs) Oh, no. No, that was terrible. It smells so janky. Oh, no. (laughs) Okay. So Aphrodite... Aphrodite, the seafoam goddess, uh, is the goddess of love. I will never look at seafoam green again. No, no, please stop. (laughs) Too many puns. Too many puns. We haven't even started. Oh, we haven't even started. Uh, Aphrodite is the goddess of love, sort of the, like, jealous goddess of love. Right. Which becomes super important in this story. I feel like I've heard stories of her being jealous before. I mean... Is that, like, a characteristic of hers? I mean, honestly, in Greek mythology, the gods and goddesses get jealous a lot. Cool. The story of um, Eros and Psyche begins with a king and a queen in Greece. Cool. They have three beautiful daughters. Nice. Always in threes. Always in threes. The two daughters, the two older daughters are absolutely gorgeous. Oh. Super, super pretty. But the third daughter. Ugly duckling? The hottest. (laughs) Didn't go the way I was expecting. No, she is the hottest. Wow. I'm sure her older sisters are really happy about that. Oh, super happy. Uh, and they're not the only ones. Um, <laughs> so she has like suitors coming from all over Greece, all over the world, which is wow. like the Mediterranean, the Mediterranean basin. <laughs> yes. Um, coming to like win her favor, trying to win her hand in marriage. Right. Be her suitor. Exactly. So much so that they're forgetting to make their sacrifices to Aphrodite. <gasps> I can see this ending very badly for the hot it one. It does not go well. <laughs> and is the hot one Psyche? If she is, right? The okay. hot one is Psyche. Yeah. Um, so Psyche's, she's not, I like that. I like, I like thinking that my, my inner self is like the hottest mortal of them all. She is. (laughs) Your inner goddess is beautiful. Right. (laughs) Work. Work. Uh, so Psyche is just like, she's not like trying to do anything. She's like, these boys are nice. Like they're okay. Like they're not really my types, but like. Got it. Right. She has literally all the choices in the world. So I can see her being picky. A little bit. She's not even picky. She's just like, "Mm, you're not doing it for me. Right. So, Waiting for love to strike her. Exactly. 
which <gasps> after- that's kind of a pun because Cupid. Yes, <laughs> Cupid or Eros. We're going to call him Eros this time. Yes. But Cupid, you think of but the-, the same idea. The bow. Is he a chubby baby or he's a person? He's a hot, hot Dude? guy, hot hat man, hot guy. Okay. Uh, not a baby. Got it. Makes Was that more of a renaissance thing? Yes. And more like a Rome thing. Oh, I see. Uh, Eros is like a hot dude where Cupid is a baby. Cupid is the name in Roman. We're doing Greek. Got it. So the Greek Eros god of love, attraction. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, who quintessentially has the bow and arrow. Got it. So like, and he makes people fall in love with like, that's like the, the love struck kind of cartoonish thing I have in my head. Is that really what it is? Yeah, pretty much. That's like that concept. He strikes the arrow at someone, they fall in love. Just at whim for fun or sometimes. And Usually he like listens to his mother. His mother's like, Those people should fall in love and he's like, All right, mom. Aw. Kinda creepy, kinda cool. Kinda creepy, <laughs> kinda cool. Depends on Greek mythology. <laughs> Colon. Kinda creepy, kinda cool. Aphrodite's pissed. She is not being worshipped, and someone is calling... Oh, yeah. Forgetting the sacrifices, temples are dusty, things are bad. Like, and psyche suitors are calling her the second coming of Aphrodite. Like, you would be pissed, That's too. what you don't do to a jealous god. Exactly. So Aphrodite is like, we gotta teach this bitch a lesson. Oh, no. And so she's like, hey, Cupid, you know what you're gonna do? And he's like, what, mom? <laughs> She's like, you're going to shoot her with an arrow and make her fall in love with, like, a gross peasant. Oh, no. And this he, is like a Midsummer Night's Dream where yeah. Titania shall fall in love with an ass. Everyone falls in love with asses. <laughs> so Cupid's like, all right. So he goes to, like, her sleeping chamber and is about to shoot the arrow. But as he's pulling it from his quiver, scratches himself and falls in love with Psyche. Wow. Mm hmm. Eros, that's pretty ham fisted. The one, you had one, one job, <laughs> Eros. You had one job. And that job was to stick a mortal with an arrow, not yourself. Let's, let's keep in mind that the, uh, the Greek gods are not like omnipotent. They don't know what's going on. So Eros goes back to his mother. He's like, yeah, mom, I, I shot her. She should be falling in love with that mortal at any day now. Oh, meaning that they can kind of trick each other. Right. Like they don't have kind of all seeing dominion over, you right. know, all of humankind. So Eros goes back to his mom. He's like, yeah, I did it. Like, you know, she thought be-, be a lot less fun if the gods couldn't trick each other. Oh yeah, absolutely. It'd be boring. Um, so he tricks his mother and then sends a messenger to right. the king, okay. Psyche's dad, right, and is like, "Listen, uh, you're gonna have to send your daughter to this cliff, and she's gonna marry this like gross monster thing <gasps> as, as a sacrifice, sort of. Like That's you pissed story. off, you pissed off Aphrodite. Now she has to marry an evil monster." And the dad is like so upset by this. Like this right. is my prettiest and youngest daughter. Like yeah, how dare this they? Baby. But so he said it makes a certain amount of sense, right? Like they offended Aphrodite and so there's some kind of punishment. And actually it's Eros being a little bit duplicitous. A little tricky. Okay. Uh, So they like have like a wedding. uh, Instead of a wedding march, they have like a funeral march. Everyone's wearing black. Like (laughs) sending her off to her doom. They drop her off at this uh, cliff and then the messenger is like, okay, everyone needs to leave. (laughs) And they're like, but he's like, no, you need to leave. And they're like, okay. Because there is no monster. Because there is no monster. The messenger turns out to be Zephyr, who is the West Wind God. Ooh. I almost said West Wing there, but that's not <laughs> what I meant. The West Wind God, which is like the gentle breeze god. Now I'm imagining it with the with the voice of Jed Bartlett. <laughs> Martin Sheen I know. playing Zephyr. Talking about like Latin conjugation or wrong Greek conjugation. <laughs> so what he does is he picks her up, he takes her to this field. And she, like, falls asleep, and when she wakes up, she's in a castle. Oh, wow. Ca- just like a pop-up castle. Yeah, it's there. Like a, it's just, all of a sudden, it's, like, there. She, like, like wakes up. Like a holiday up. pop-up market, but instead, it's a castle in a field. Yes. <laughs> and it's, like, the super nicest thing. She's, like, wandering around. She's, like, that's really nice granite. Oh, look, a nice mosaic. <laughs> and all the things you want in a starter home. Want. A starter castle. And she's just kind of, like, wow, this is nice, but where is my creepy monster husband? Right. And a disembodied voice answers her. She's like, I am your husband. Let's go eat something. You cannot see me. And she's like, that seems super weird. He's like, don't worry about it. But it's not a monster, I guess. It's- does she think that the monster is elsewhere? Or does she think that, like, this is the scary part? Is she thinks that is- this is the scary part. Oh, okay. That her husband's just a voice. Well, she's not sure. She thinks it's like a trick of some sort where sure. it's like, 
this evil monster is just like disguising himself as a disembodied voice. Yeah, so she's that like a seems little sketchy, pretty sketchy. It's a little sketchy to her, but like slowly as the day goes on, the voice kind of wins her over. Like he sings her songs and like makes nice her a food, feast and nice like mosaic. And so she's like, hmm, okay, I, I can get behind this. And so he like takes her to the bedroom. They have awesome sex. She still hasn't seen him yet in the darkness. In the dark. So she, so there's, she knows that so, something or someone is there. Right. Because they have sex and right. she winds up pregnant oh. and it's like a whole thing. How about that happens just right away? Oh, well, <laughs> everyone is super fertile in the Greek mythology. <laughs> it just happens. So what she ends up doing is she's like living this kind of lap of luxury lifestyle, but like she never sees her husband. It's, it's a little weird. weird. Yeah. And she's like, she's really enjoying everything. She really has only one complaint. She misses her sister's understandable you miss True. your siblings they all think you're like dead or married to a monster there's three of them it feels different with only you know yourself Just, around exactly i get it so she tells her husband this and he's like okay so he gets zephyr to go like pick up the sisters with his like wind power and drop them off at the house and uh gravelly martin sheen voice <laughs> <laughs> That's a messenger you can trust, right? Come up to you. I can't do a Martin Sheen impression, but girls, it's time to visit your sister. Moving on. (laughs) Uh, So the sister's like super happy to see Psyche. Like, oh my God, you're not dead or like weirdly deformed because of your monster husband. And she's like, no, no, it's like really nice. Like, look at my nice palace and like blah, 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 blah. And they're like, yeah, but what about your husband? Because they're like, they're sounding a little jealous. Like, this is way nicer than our castle. Like... You're living, like, the lap of luxury. Right. Like, what's up with this? She's like... Slash so she's married. She's married. They're not. Uh, and she's like, well, like, I haven't seen my husband. They're like, what do you mean? And she's like, well, he's <laughs> invisible. They're like, that's weird. She's like, eh, it's a little weird. They're like, no, no, he's probably, like, a vile, like, flying serpent thing. <gasps> and she's like, he doesn't feel like a vile flying serpent thing. She's like, they're like, no, no, he is. And then she's like... Well, what if he is? Wow, classic older sister just ruining her happiness. Oh, absolutely. Like, so jealous that they have to <laughs> ruin everything for her. So the sisters are like, you need to find out, like, if he is a vile serpent thing. And so she, like, ha- the sisters get flown away again. And as it's over, they go home. Exactly. And Psyche hatches a plot. She's like, when he's sleeping tonight, after we have awesome sex, I'm going to take a candle and a knife and if he's a vile serpent, I'll kill him, and then we'll like, I'll just like you know to keep protect, the castle, protect herself, keep the castle, make sure her baby's safe because she's still pregnant. Oh right! And so she like in the middle of the night, she like hides like a knife under her pillow and like oh. pulls it out and lights a candle, and she like puts it over his body, and it's not a vile serpent thingy. It's, it's a god. A, it's a hot dude. Oh. It's a super hot dude. Best possible outcome. And she's like, oh my god, this is the hottest guy I've ever seen. And like, while she's flipping out over that, she accidentally spills a little bit of the wax on his Uh, chest. Classic. Of course, wakes him up, because he's not super kinky like that. (laughs) And so... Or maybe he springs out of bed like, let's do this. Except not. Either way, he wakes up. He wakes up. Realizes he's been seen, right? Yes. Oh, And he's like... Oh my god, you betrayed my trust and flees. <gasps> oh. He disappears. The castle disappears. She just like left stuck in a meadow by a river and she's like, I don't know what to do. Oh, now. No. This is super in weird. In her nightgown. <laughs> she's probably naked, let's be real. Oh. Um, she is just like Not thinking so again upset. about the, the Venus painting in the in the <laughs> show. Oh no, I'm sorry. <laughs> so basically she kind of she wanders her way back home. She finds her sister. She tells them I was married to a god. And they're like, oh, we want to be married to gods. And like knowing that. uh, No apology. No. They totally messed this up for her. So they're like, hmm, well, we want to be married to gods. So they each like individually go to the cliff where they had dropped off Psyche. Right. To like send her away. And they're like, yo, Zephyr, bring me to Eros. And then jump off the cliff, (gasps) assuming that he's going to pick them up. Which he doesn't. <gasps> do they plummet to their deaths? Yes, they do. It's very like stepsisters in Cinderella, oh, yeah. where they like get their eyes pecked out at the end. Self-sabotaging, right? And they kind of exactly. like get retribution. Mm-hmm. That's kind of sad, but I kind of get it. Yeah, like they were kind of dicks about it. They so, were. Like, they totally ruined her happiness. And like also like they're just like, oh, I'm pretty enough for me to marry a god. No, Let me not, jump babe. off a cliff. You're not the second coming of Aphrodite, are you? Nope. Understandably. Her husband's gone. Her sisters are dead now. Oh, no. 
Or her parents have kind of like shunned her. Of course. Well, yeah. Um, they're like basically pretending she's dead. So Psyche isn't sure what she's going to do. She kind of starts wandering the earth. She throws herself at the like at the feet of like different goddesses, like becomes, praying for help. Exactly. She becomes a priestess for Demeter. That doesn't help. She becomes a priestess for um, Hera. That doesn't help. Finally, she's like, you know what I'm going to have to do? I'm going to have to become a like mistress of Aphrodite. Interesting. So like a servant of Aphrodite, yeah. who is her mother-in-law. Yes. So what is her aim? She wants to get she, Eros back and apologize? I think to like uh, some way she wants to win back her love because she really did love him, even if Eros thought she didn't trust right. him. So makes sense. Go to the mother-in-law who hates her because she's jealous, mm-hmm. I assume. Yes. And also is like the goddess of love. So if anyone's going to win her back her love, it's sure. going to be Aphrodite to help her out. I bet that doesn't work out simply. Aphrodite is still pissed. Even more pissed, probably, because she stole her son away from And her son is now sulking. And the son is, like, off sulking somewhere. It's like he doesn't know where. Right. Aphrodite is kind of just, like, a bitch to her. Like, she gets treated like an intern at a really big company. (laughs) Aphrodite sends her on a bunch of different missions in order to prove her, like, loyalty to her and also her worthiness to her son. Okay. So the first thing she does is, like, Aphrodite is, like, going off to, like, a, like, god feast. And see, she, like, pulls, like, literally, it's, like, straight out of Cinderella. She, like, throws a bunch of, like, different kind of grains, and she's, like, sort this before I get back. And Psyche's, like, well, how the fuck am I supposed to do that? Giant pile of, like, seeds and stuff. Like, giant pile of, like, grain and seeds and all sorts of things. Classic pointless intern task. <laughs> exactly. Intern to unfuck this filing room. <laughs> and so Psyche, like a fairy tale creature, just decides, like, let me grab some insects from this tree and like Aww. have them sort it for me. Enlist the the you know fruits of the forest exactly. to help me out. And Psyche's like also in there like kind of plucking them as she can. Alright, she's trying. Um, and so by morning it's done. And Aphrodite is just, like, pissed that she actually got it done. Whatever you finished. I'm like, oh, here's a scrap of bread. Enjoy. Aww. So uh, she passes the first uh, the first test. Good for her. Then the second test is she has to cross a river and fetch golden wool from violent sheep. Violent sheep? Violent sheep. I never heard of sheep being violent. I mean, like, they're, like, the ones with the horns who will, like, ram into oh. you and stuff like that. All right, well. Yeah, like, they're, and they're, like, like, the sheep of the sun or something, so they'll, like, ran into you and like kill you and they're like god sheep oh wow Mm -hmm. so she's like looking across this river she's like what am i gonna do i might (laughs) as well just drown myself in the river and then apollo fuck boy apollo is just like hanging out and he's like hmm this hot girl seems to want some stuff for my sheep (laughs) (laughs) i guess i'll help her out classic apollo going for the damsel in distress so Apollo teaches her how to make like an instrument out of the reeds in the river, Why? which soothes the uh, <gasps> the sheep. The sheep, and she's able to like shear the sheep without them like trying to kill her. Wow! Yeah, it's kind of like changing a fussy baby. Yeah, got distracted somehow. Exactly. <laughs> um, so she succeeds in that task, and meanwhile, all right. Second task. I'm assuming there's going to be three tasks. There's is that true? Tasks, oh, actually. dang it! Missing. But there's like, there's like three, and then the final task. Okay. So it's okay. Fine. Okay. Um, so... This isn't, like, the nine gyms of Jotun. <laughs> you know. Johto? Johto. And Kanto? <laughs> That's the one. Pokemon reference. <laughs> um, so... Mangled Pokemon reference. Right. Even worse. So, Aphrodite's just pissed that she's, like, kind of getting... Right, every time she tests. succeeds, Aphrodite like, gets she's madder. Just like, she's like, she sorted stuff. She How dare her be so from, good at this? She got wool from sheep. She's good with animals. <laughs> God damn it. Um... And so mad that she actually, in a fit of rage and is yelling at Psyche, Uh reveals the fact that Eros is just, like, chilling in her household. Like, recovering from the wound that uh, Psyche gave him. He's like like a whiny child sulking. But now she knows where he is. But now she knows where he is, which is why she continues. She's like, okay, I know where he is. I'll keep doing this until he, like, until I prove my love to him. Okay. And so, the next task she ends up doing is she's given a uh, crystal vial, and she has to go to the river Styx and fill it with water. And so, it's just like a rocky, volcanic area filled with dragons. Wow. Yeah. You can't get much more hard to pass through than that. (laughs) 
pretty much. So Psyche, like, shows up. She's like, there's all these dragons. I'm just a pregnant lady. Oh, gosh. I can't, I can't fight dragons. And so another fuckboy that's been watching her, Zeus, is like, <laughs> you know what? OG fuckboy. And he sends a bunch of eagles down to fight the dragons while she's getting these vials of uh, So water. Zeus just takes pity on her? Or yeah. Zeus likes seeing Aphrodite's plans undone? A little bit of both. Okay. They're all trying to fuck with each other. Like, right. that's just how the Greek myths are. They're, like, always trying As to mess with each As the oldest of four other. kids, I, I understand this impulse. Absolutely. <laughs> um, so she's able to retrieve it. Aphrodite gives her a task that she's like, I'm going to give Psyche a task that is just, like, impossible. Right. Like, try, to, just, try to trip her up. There's no way she's going to do this. So Aphrodite goes, listen, I need you to take this box... And go down to the underworld. Oh, man. And get Persephone's beauty. Uh, that doesn't sound very easy. It's not, because one, it's the underworld, and two, it's Persephone. And three, it's beauty, an intangible force. Well, it's it's the Greeks. They think they make it tangible. Kind of tangible. Somehow. <laughs> Love love is a person. So is it so people don't go into Hades that often, right? Uh it's like not a thing you can do. You go in and you don't go out. Exactly. <laughs> There's, like, been, like, three people who went into Hades and then were able to come out. Wow. So what does she do? So. Does she know how to do it? No. I feel like I just, no. I don't know how to get to And Hades. she's just, like, she's, like, you know what? This seems really hard. Yeah. I'm going to climb onto this tower and commit suicide. <gasps> no, please don't. But she doesn't. Because the tower, like, somehow comes to life and starts speaking to her. So not just the crickets of the forest, but also stones just talk to her. Inanimate objects. It's fine. Wow. Um, So it basically tells her how to get to Hades and how to survive getting to Hades and coming back. That's very convenient. So it tells her (laughs) the path to go down, tells her where to go, tells her you can't talk to anyone until you're in Hades. So you, you can't, like, talk to anybody on the way there. To be distracted from your path? Exactly. Or would that, like, magically entrap her in some it's way? It's kind of very, like, uh, in, like, fae stories. You can't, like, eat the food on the way there oh, or sure. else you're trapped. He tells her to do that. He also tells her to bring treats for Cerberus, the guard dog. <gasps> That's so sweet! It's so cute. That makes so much sense! And then to me... It's sh- like... Quick piece of practical advice, Julie, before we continue. If you're on a long car ride with children, the most important thing you can have in your arsenal <laughs> is snacks. Oh, my God. Yeah, you, have to, you have to distract the wailing creature. I kind of picture it as, like, every, um, every like, spy movie where they're trying to break into somewhere. Oh, like a pink and panther caper? Right, where there's, <laughs> like, a guard dog, and oh, they, like, yeah. throw stakes to the guard dog, throw and it gets snake. distracted. Aww. And so uh, he tells her to bring the snacks for Cerberus. And then he tells her, you need to bring coins, point, plural coins, to get past the ferryman. Oh, sure, the guy who ferries you across in the boat. Exactly. That's why the Greeks would bury someone with one coin so that they ha- would have the uh, oh, the toll, the fare, right. the fare to go across she the river. Needs two. She needs two because she's got to come like back. I feel like I totally would have forgotten oh, that. Oh, exactly. You totally <laughs> would. Um, and I feel like a lot of myths forget that, and I'm just like, well, how did they get back? Uh, so everything goes according to plan. That's a very convenient tower. Can we just return to that for a second? <laughs> Do we know anything more about it? No, it's just like, thank you, tower, and she goes. <laughs> <laughs> everything goes according to cl- plan. Oh, wow. She ends up meeting Persephone, like, in the throne in the middle of Hades. Sure. And does um, Persephone have some sympathy for her? Persephone was- is usually, like, a cold-blooded bitch. Oh, no. But Perse- Persephone's like, nah, I feel you. Respect. Respect yeah. and gives her the beauty in the box. Um, Do we know what that beauty? Is? Psyche doesn't see what the beauty is right. when she puts it in the box. Cool. Um, so she man- she gives her second toll to the uh, to the boatman. Ferryman. Gets out, <laughs> uh, walks back, is into the overworld again. Sunlight hits her face, but the problem is she's like. What's in the box? What's in the box? Oh, no. And so she, in very Pandora method, opens the box. Don't open the box. What's in the box... Never open the box. ...is, like, a magical sleep. And she instantly, like, falls into a coma. Why? Why does it represent beauty? Well... I mean, I don't know the actual answer, but when I'm thinking about it, I'm like, the Greeks are like, you need your beauty rest. <laughs> that's that's so fitting. I was thinking something like either Persephone was sabotaging Aphrodite, 
right? And, mm-hmm. like, wanted to knock her out or something. Mm-hmm. Or, potentially, that when a mortal opens the box, she sees something different than the god would. Probably. But the beauty sleep, that's it's really cute. That's pretty adorable. And Absolutely. And headcanon, I'm choosing to believe that that's true. Got it. So, as Psyche is, like, asleep at the edge of the uh, underworld. Right on the precipice. Yeah, exactly. At the same time, Eros is finally, like, recovering from his man angst. Oh, his, his little his little heart wound has healed? Oh, yes. They literally, in the mythology, they say that the wound over his heart had healed and turned into a scar. Aww. Which is, like, poetic, but also, like, really, like, it was it was a burn. So, Eros comes out of his uh, angsty man cave. Yes. And... His childhood bedroom. <laughs> pretty <laughs> much. Where he's been <laughs> fawned over by his mom. Yeah. And so... Oh, or- Aphrodite is essentially, like, answering the phone, like, no, Eros is not home. Yes, he's very busy. <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> and Eros, like, realizing that he's still in love with Psyche, oh. and knowing that his mother is still super pissed about the entire thing. So, he's woken up. He pops out of his bedroom window and flies off to go find her. Really? And because there's, like, that emotional connection between them, he's able to, like, find her right away. Bella. (laughs) Pretty much. (laughs) It's like that weird Twilight scene where he's, like, coming to her in dreams, (laughs) but not really. Um, So he finds her. He draws the sleep from her face, which is, like, the phrase that they use, but basically, like, wakes her up. Lifts the, right, lifts the veil of sleep. Yeah. Puts it back in the box. Cool. So she can fulfill her mission. Mm -hmm. And then wakes her up by pricking her with an arrow that does not harm. Uh, So he then, like, picks her up, lifts her into the air, and then carries her uh, back to uh, Mount Olympus. Cool. Also, like, dropping off the box with his mother on the way there. All right, so task fulfilled. Task fulfilled. fulfilled. Fine. Aphrodite's like, huh, I guess I'll (laughs) I'll send her on another one. And Eros is like, no, Mom. So he goes to Zeus, and he's like, listen. Zeus is the arbiter. Right, so he can kind of decide how to Yeah, he's like the patriarch, he's the king, he gets to decide, like, all the Greek gods, like, fights and stuff. All their petty disputes. Exactly. So he, uh, Eros goes to him, he's like, listen, my mom's being ridiculous, I love this woman, she loves me back, I know she's immortal, but, like, can we, like, make it work? And Zeus is like, you know what, that's chill, we can do that, you can marry her. And then, uh, they give Psyche ambrosia. Which is the, like, drink of the gods and also grants mortals immortality. Oh, gosh. So she becomes a goddess as well. What? And they are united in a marriage of equals. Happy twist ending! It's super, super cute. He tells Aphrodite to back off. She has to, like, accept it. Um, and then he also says that their union will redeem Eros of his history of provoking adultery and sordid liaisons. Wow. So she, so- like, literally made an honest man of him. That is amazing. So how is their kid? Is the kid okay? Uh, the kid is great. He's born and uh, he becomes the god of pleasure in Greek mythology. That's a little bit creepy. A little bit. But this is such an interesting and different kind of myth. So the human prevails. Uh-huh. The god is put in her place. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's pretty unusual, is it not? Normally it's the gods kind of like playing with us like we're their pawns. Absolutely. But- and she's a she gets to prove herself, right? She doesn't get rescued. She, you know, she goes yeah. and, and wins her love back. Exactly. She like wins everyone over. She fights back. She like wins While him pregnant. over. While pregnant. Wow. Like, like literally like a female pregnant superhero. Yeah. She's great. And like in sort of like the allegory of it all, it's like that representation of when um, the soul and love are like combined and like can create great things. And it also in Greek mythology, they talk a lot about the phrase that comes up is uh, there can be no love where there is no trust. Wow. So it kind of proves That's like profound. she trusted him so much that she like went through all these tasks, hoping, trusting that he would come back to her and like give her back the love that they have. Yeah, and he learns to trust her again, right? Exactly. Like, the, the kind of the inciting act here was her betraying him, mm-hmm. and now they decided to, you know, look each other in the face, spiritually, <laughs> and actually, literally, and embark on their new life together. And, like, everyone kind of wins out. Like, love conquers all in this, That's which is... That's a pretty profound parable. Exactly, and, like, so different than most Greek mythology. Usually it ends, like, really tragically. Be too ambitious and die. Yes. <laughs> right, much. or whatever. Or look Hubris. in the box and die. Yes. <laughs> and in this situation, it's just, you see 
love and the human soul prevail and it's like so interesting as like a myth and as like because it really is a a meeting of passion and intellect right of passion and, and reason yes they don't just have that initial attraction it's not just the fact that the arrow pricked him and he's in love with her Mm -hmm. they they have to decide to recommit to each other Mm -hmm. and isn't that such a trope that we see all the time talk about you know the same myths or the same stories recurring again and again in human life whenever three thousand years ago to Mm -hmm. today we still see rom-coms where they have an initial kiss or attraction or one night stand and then everything goes to shit and then they reconnect at the end right exactly someone has a betrayal or someone slept with their ex or whatever and then at the end they have to decide okay you know a clear head now outside of the the initial passions they decide to recommit to each other exactly wow the greeks have stuff to teach us sometimes sometimes usually it's kill your father and create a weird sister (laughs) out of the foam and ocean oh you reminded me again (laughs) no (laughs) and sometimes it's the passion of love and human soul coming together this is a little bit less sweet Spirits was created by Julia Shafini and me, Amanda McLaughlin. It's edited by Eric Schneider with music by Kevin McLeod. Allison Wakeman designed our logo. Subscribe to Spirits on your preferred podcast app to make sure you never miss an episode. Our website is spiritspodcast.com and you can also find us at Spirits Podcast on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and SoundCloud. On our Patreon page, patreon.com slash spiritspodcast, you can sign up for exclusive content like behind-the-scenes photos, audio extras, blooper reels, and beautiful recipe cards with custom drink and snack pairings to go along with each show we are so thankful to those of you who signed up to support us already every little bit helps as we get our first season off the ground if you like the show please share it with your friends on twitter on facebook wherever you want and leave us a review on itunes as lame as it is as much as apps remind you to review them all you have is my sultry voice in your ears pleading with you to please rate and review us if you like the show And listen, we're listed in the history section rather than the comedy section, so what I'm saying is we're totally coming for you, Lore. Here's hoping. Thanks so much for listening. Till next time.